So in this video, I want to look at the array modifier, which is one of my favorite modifiers and I use it all the time. Now, to be perfectly honest, the array modifier has lots of fairly advanced uses, and we're not going to talk about those in this video. I may do a couple follow up videos showing how to do that. For this video, we're going to look at the most simple, basic way to use it, but it's still a huge time saver. So you can see here what I've got here kind of looks like maybe a slat or a part of a picket fence. Now, if I want to make a picket fence, I can just duplicate these and carefully move them in to be in place. But that takes time and it takes effort and it's easy to mess it up. And modifiers are all about saving us time and frankly, letting us be a little bit lazier than we might otherwise be. So making sure that I have my object selected, I'm going to come to my modifier tab, then I'm going to add the array modifier, which is at the top of the generate list. When I do that, it's already duplicated the slat. I now have two of them. You can see that here where we've got a fixed count of two. If I just increase that a couple, you can see that we're starting to get more of a fence. But that's not what fences look like, at least most of the time. We want to space them out a little bit further. And that's where this relative offset comes in. Relative offset is the most common way of using the array modifier, and it's certainly the simplest way to do it. Here you can see that the X value is a one, Y is zero, and Z is zero. And what this is doing is spacing them out relative to the object size in that dimension. So at one, they're just spaced out perfectly so they nudge right up next to each other. If I move that value up, you can see we get more space between them and we start to look a little bit more like a regular fence. Now this is all one object. So if I go into edit mode, you can see I'm only able to edit one of these objects, but I'm actually editing all of them, which is pretty handy again, as opposed to duplicating, where I might have to, if I want to change the design, I might have to go in and change all of the objects here. I just need to change one. So let's look at a second use case of the array modifier, or to be more specific, how to use the array modifier more than once. So here I have just a flattened cube that might be say uh, a tile or part of a floor. I'm going to come over to my modifier tab. I'm going to add my array modifier. I'm going to space it out a little bit, kind of like so. And maybe I'll add a few more in like that. In the previous example, we didn't play around with the Y and Z values. I would encourage you to do that. And you can see how that works. We just kind of shift it off and you can create some diagonals like so. There's some pretty creative things you can do with that. But what if I don't want a row of objects? What if I want to make a grid of objects? Well, what I can do is come in here and add another array modifier. Now, if you look at that, we've actually duplicated the four objects that we started with, which is not what we want to do. So instead of going on the X direction, I can make that zero. And then on the Y direction, I can make this 1.1 like so. And I start to get a grid. If I increase this, if I go back to my first array modifier. I can make it bigger and so on and so forth. So one thing that's really important with modifiers is they work in the order that you've applied them. So this first array modifier is affecting the grid in the X direction. The second one is affecting the grid in the Y direction. This is pretty useful, pretty handy. And you can see if you wanted to create a square tile floor, you could do this in just seconds and not have to duplicate all the different tiles and spread them all around and try to get them placed in exactly the right spot.